The Section 5 inspection regime is well underway, but for those on the front line, there are still a lot of questions. Three determined primary heads from a cross-section of schools have come to Ofsted HQ to get their questions answered. Between them, they have more than 20 years of senior management experience, and this is their opportunity to examine what inspectors are really looking for. Time to turn the tables on whole school primary inspector, Susan Gregory. We've got to be really careful that the self-evaluation form doesn't become a red herring. Uh, I've been talking to some head teachers who've had a, 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 one of these new style inspections and they say it's been very varied, the, mm. the people who've been spoken to and particularly the teachers who've been observed. How do the teachers feel if they weren't seen or talked to them? Well, I think that's an interesting question actually because teachers probably, although they don't like it, would like to be seen. You, you felt that as well, didn't you, from people you'd been speaking to? So. Yeah. Yeah, the inspection I know of within, <clears throat> within Barnet went very well, but some teachers weren't actually seen in that mm. school, so mm. that feeling of uh, being part of the team, contributing to a, a major part of the school year, uh, was a difficult one for teachers. I have a concern for those schools where they've been placed in special measures, where teachers may not have been observed. They may develop a, a view that um, they've been tarred with the same brush, that they didn't actually contribute to the actual process. How are inspectors managing that part of it? We can't pretend in a one-day inspection or a two-day inspection that we're going to see everything. That's not what it's designed to do. The Section 5 process is about getting to the heart of things that really matter and it won't get to everything. And that's an important role for heads, to really help teachers to understand that there are incredibly important aspects of what the school is doing that won't be under rigorous scrutiny during a Section 5 inspection. I think my point was also linked to the fact that the school felt there was an overemphasis mm. on inspecting the teaching in the tested year groups, which would be year two in a primary school in year six. Is it going to be the, the data from the testing subjects becomes more important than any school generated data in non-core subjects? In a very short inspection, the focus is going to be on outcomes. So what's happening? four pupils by the time they get to the end of a key stage. So as well as inspecting those year groups, they would be looking perhaps at the personal development and talking to children at the same time? Yes. So there's no blueprint actually about it happening in a particular way in every single school because it will be determined by mm -hmm. the contextual factors, what the school wants the inspection team to look at and the dialogue that then is generated yes. around the CEF. And the team will constantly be reinvented for what reasons the starting point for every Section 5 inspection is the self-evaluation form. Right. Occasionally, a, a CEF will gloss over quite important issues. An example of that might be where the panda data suggests that children make satisfactory progress. And the CEF says, in our school, children do very well indeed. Where a CEF reflects a school as far as you can see at the pre-inspection stage, then what the inspection team will do during the inspection is set up some inspection trails to test out some of the assertions that the school has made in the CEF. And so that then will determine where the, where the inspection team goes. I had heard that because the short inspection might focus more on the core subjects of the curriculum, that a school might, over time, get a spot visit from a subject, HMI. If you're in a primary school, you might, okay? It's not a given that you'll have one within the three-year cycle. And, and that could be for any subject? It could be for any subject. If it's a primary school, it's usually a one-day inspection. It will be focused on the self-evaluation that the school provides of the work in that particular subject. So what I'm asking is, will we be getting subject inspections, say, in art and design? You may well do. So that there's an interest in the wider curriculum. That, that's what I, yes. I'm pushing at. You really, certainly will do. I presume there is other data that obviously has available apart from just the CEF and the Panda. We're reliant on local intelligence to well, really. What do you mean by local intelligence? That sounds. Okay. <laughs> that's an interesting, interesting term. A new bit of Ofsted <laughs> jargon, isn't it? It's about working with local authorities, working with schools. How successfully did you feel your team managed to? gather evidence from the governing body. 
I was fortunate as much as my chair of governors is very experienced was available. However, that was through luck rather than judgment because you, you just can't plan with a two day sort of like lead in to have governors available at the drop of a hat really. Mm. And I think that's something that needs to be addressed. Yeah. I, I was wondering as well about parents, how parents are involved in this new inspection. Was that more difficult or easier this time? I think you've got to have your data there though, haven't you? You've got to have as the previous system was to collect information yes, from but parents. It, but is there still a questionnaire it's, that goes out? There's a questionnaire that goes out and um, you need to turn it round very quickly. Did you use other data from parents that you might have got on, under self-evaluation? Um, that is one of our development points, right. really. I mean, that's... Well, would, you th would you think that would be a good idea to have Absolutely. That? I think it's um, something that, you know, a lot of schools need to take on board and we, we will be doing that. There will be some schools that feel as though they haven't had enough dialogue. You know, we're not all brilliant yeah, at doing is. things as well I, as we I think can. that, definitely. And we know there are things to improve. For inspectors in September and October, you need to be where you are. Can I also ask a question then about the evidence that might be uh, requested to, to back up um, statements in the SEF? Again, people that I've talked to have said they've been advised that they should have, for every point they make in their SEF, they should have a, a paper trail and have it to hand for the two-day inspection. I mean, how close is that to what you're expecting? That sounds as though that would increase bureaucracy rather than reduce it. Well, you know, we're slightly cynical about some well, parts of the day, I must also, say. Across different local authorities, uh, schools are doing very different very things. Very different things. In, in yeah. our local authority, we're asked to do a, a Barnet's own type of CEF document yes. for Barnet, and then we have to do CEF for you know, potential Ofsted. Does it have to be in the Ofsted CEF format? Is it not good enough to have a school self-evaluation document that is presented to Ofsted at the time that um, there, a school comes forward for an inspection? Some schools may choose to do that. They are being encouraged to, to complete a self-evaluation form and to submit that. We're hoping that head teachers won't shut themselves away in rooms, fill out the CEF and then produce it for the inspection team because that's not going to give a very good flavour of how the team works in the school. Schools are not expected to provide portfolios. That's what Ofsted's stance is. Schools should be able to point to the evidence. And that doesn't mean show me by getting out 10 files. It means give me an indication of where the evidence is and show me. So th that, in a way, could be where uh, the head would say, well, you need to go and speak to so-and-so. So the Absolutely. evidence could be that kind of evidence as well as a paper it trail. Could well be. Which, again, would, would cut down work it there. Well yeah. What inspectors will do now is they'll say, let's have a look at maybe a couple of your children. Let's have a look at how well they're doing. Let's have a look at the things that you've done to support their progress, to support their personal development. So can you tell us, when do you freeze the CEF then? <laughs> what does a frozen CEF look like? Absolutely. <laughs> Isn't it interesting how playground whispers and Chinese whispers get around? What actually happens is, when the school gets the phone call, at that point, a copy of the CEF will have been taken from the school's site. Let's say you haven't yet done your analysis of the SAT results fully from the summer term, and that you haven't updated your CEF. That's not a problem. All you need to do is make sure that the lead inspector knows about the status of your CEF and the fact that there is more data and there is more evidence that you want to talk about that isn't necessarily reflected in the document that's been taken off your website. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing that can be frozen. Please reassure colleagues of that. <laughs> And what, what would you be expecting schools, you know, in terms of making their own judgments? You know, we've had debates, haven't we, about whether you should aim for the next highest judgment to what you really feel or the one below. What's the view coming out about that at the moment? I, I think I'd have to ask you, what would be the value of pretending that the school is where it isn't, trying to cover things up? How can that possibly benefit children ultimately think, and that's what need, Steph should capture. I don't think you need to worry about that so much because the thing is head teachers we're quite modest aren't we about making our own judgments would rather put it that that the level perhaps yeah. to what it is and hope that somebody would say actually you're you're actually better than you think you are I think that's that's an outcome. Uh, and I guess in a sense then they're checking out the head teachers judgment of the school aren't they you know if, the, if that's the heads put the Steph together they're working with the school to see if the judgments are right. They're testing out 
the judgment of the leadership and the leadership of teachers and other people who have a role to play in the school. And I have heard as well of heads spending their entire summer, summer holiday yeah. doing mm. their SEF because they felt under pressure mm. to have it ready just in case. Mm. You know, are there going to be any good um, examples, good practice that we can look at and helping to train us to give you the right information? I think that's a concern if head teachers are spending the whole of their holiday pulling together a SEF. We've got to be really careful that the self-evaluation form doesn't become a red herring because what really matters is the quality of the self-evaluation process, exactly. its links with school improvement planning and ultimately how that impacts on how well children do and the quality of the provision in the school. If schools are writing very long SEFs, and they are, some of them, then what we're finding is they're telling us about what they do rather than the impact of what they're doing. Uh -huh. Say as a head teacher, you're worried that uh, inspectors will miss something really important, so you put everything in the SEF, including the time that children have break in the morning and play in the afternoon. That's not what the SEF should be. So what's it identified in terms of its strengths? What's it identify that it's needed to do next? And what's the outcome of that been? And that's what should be in the CEF, and that's what should generate the dialogue. And you can really help out with that. There was a little bit of pressure there. And I just wondered how inspectors uh, manage that, the, the personal ambition, the personal nervousness about an inspection for the head teacher. You'll probably be reassured to know that inspectors are inspected as well. So <laughs> part of my role is to go out with other HMI and quality assure inspections. So we're inspecting the inspectors. And I too am inspected. And that's right, because we're accountable for the quality of what we do. And inspectors must be sensitive with heads. And we hope that we get that right. We don't always, we know that. Are there enough inspection teams to meet the, the demand, shall we say, of the three-year cycle? And people who want to be inspectors, that's, that's always interested me, yes. actually. <laughs> it, 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 well, it's interesting because um, we've got a much reduced workforce now. So what regional inspection service providers or contractors have been able to do is really take the best of the inspection workforce that we have to offer and very much looking for practitioners like you to come forward and join um, inspection teams. So you, you would hope head teachers could continue as head teachers and maybe do one yes. per term? That's what we're hoping, right. yes. Are you um, happy that you have got the right workload for the teams? That they're they haven't got too much on in one week that by the end of the week, if you're the school at the end of the week perhaps, you might get shortchanged in some way. As good employers, we should be mindful of the right sort of work-life balance for our inspectors so that they're able to um, really conduct inspections of the highest quality. And you're right, it's something we need to keep an eye on. Some inspectors lead an inspection and might contribute to aspects of another inspection during a week. But, as I say, you know, that's it's certainly something that we would be mindful of in how we deploy our team. Just a bit of feedback for you. I think Ofsted have improved that part of it hugely. I think I've had four inspections and, and each one has been improving in the personal relationship with, with the head teacher. So we've begun to fear it less and <laughs> feel that a relationship can be developed and we can show our best. And if you establish that good relationship, it's good for us all, it's good for the children. Yeah. Don't know how you yes, feel, Andy. I, think, I think the more inspections we have, the, the better it becomes for us all. <laughs> <laughs>